We shall make peace. <laughs> What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanashi and my name is Shanks In today we are going to cast a replay for battle for middle of 1 on the patch 1.06 This time it's gonna be a 5 player free for all match on the map Desolation of Smog Which I have never seen before Because when you ever play 5 player free for all you obviously and almost every single time choose the map Belfalas And the reason is simple because on Belfalas you have a castle as your base But on this map you have only a camp which has way less spots available and also is way less tanky so you are much more vulnerable against a potential early rush and we will see how this is gonna go we have a Rohan another Rohan Isengard another Isengard another Rohan yeah we have three Rohans and two Isengards no Mordor and no Gondor at all and Isengard is pretty strong in a situation like that because again Isengard has the chance to get very strong swordmen with the Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and Warchan combination which Isengard can easily get in a map like this you can actually go for a big push like I'm telling you 2, 3, 4 Uruks with Forge Blades, Heavy Armor they can wipe out the entire camp from any player in one minute it's going to be kind of tough to deal with that okay so what is the plan? The plan, um, you have obviously multiple different choices. So for example, what you can do with Rohan is you can rush heroes like Elma or Theodin. Or you can rush Legolas, for example. You can try to go for a cavalry start and try to get your Elma level 4, Theodin level 4 for a glorious charge. And then use the mobility advantage, which can be quite nice in a map like this. But if you want to go for like more infantry style, um, going for Legolas opening, you know, rushing Legolas, getting Aragorn, Theodin, and then getting some peasants with the Yeoman Archer combination can also be pretty solid when it comes to all out fight because infantry with leadership always beats cavalry but cavalry can avoid fighting your army and can always try to rush your base instead so Isengard is creeping the Uruks he will also get the money that's pretty good and this Isengard actually getting a lot of map control he will have in total now 3 mils outside which is pretty good because you will get um, in total 20% discount on your buildings, which means even an armory, which normally costs you 1200, will cost you only 960. That's more than 200 you will end up saving just because you have like 3 mils outside. A forest to maximum. You have Hobbit situation here, two Hobbits. <laughs> One of them is the imposter, you know, Meriodok Brandybog. Now, I am Meriodok Brandybog. Now, you are Meriodok Brandybog. Now, I am. <laughs> but let, let's see who's the imposter and who's the real fight of the Rohan faction can touch this did it did it did it did it did it <laughs> running yeah what I would do out okay we have also another hobbit here we have actually in total three Meriodog brandy box that's kind of crazy Eoma rush from the blue Rohan player and the other Rohan player is rushing Theorin with the steeple into the Rohirrim and this red Rohan player is actually I believe rushing Legolas because he has more than 2500 you can see the heroes which are lit up are heroes he can recruit money-wise and the heroes which are, you know, kind of grayed out are the heroes he cannot afford to recruit yet. Okay, so we have a push situation. Warchan has been used, but I think without the blades and heavy armor, you cannot really do a successful push. And when you want to do a push, you need to be kind of fast because the second those furnaces are hitting level 3, they will become very tanky. They will have 6,000 HP. And in addition to that, they will also be able to shoot. So... You know, your Uruks will also die eventually because not only the furnaces but also the sentry towers will start shooting all the time. Um, the goal here for the orange Rohan player should be to get Theodin to level 4 ASAP. And you can do that by creeping. There is a farm, and you can even see that these players they don't even know what is going on this map. Like, there are two farms, free farms, and nobody picking them up. <laughs> Lit and no, there are even more free farms. I think that's the problem because nobody knows this map i don't know this map either and you can see that they are not using any maps which are free to be taken from the beginning of the game without any creeps around them <laughs> they are losing so much money because when you build a farm outside the, the, the farm will be instantly level two giving you way more money in compared to a level one farm inside your camp okay then it's almost level two it's gonna be a you know, great step to get to the level 4 power spike. We have Legolas creeping the troll here. He killed the troll first and then destroying his home right after. Legolas, the troll slayer. He's gonna get level 3 after that. 
troll them, uh, creeping this with, you know, with level 1 heroes is very beneficial because you get like 2 levels from it. You see from level 1 all the way to level 3. In level 3, um, I mean levels advantage on Legolas is very massive because the amount of damage boost you get is kind of crazy. They've also Elma for the orange Rohan player now. I mean, you can see from the movement of the players, they have literally no information about, <laughs> about the map, actually. They are not using the map at all. Armory coming up for Isengard. He was already able to purchase the... Oh, 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 oh. okay. So Forge plays Heavy Armor on two Uruks. Let's see if this is going to be enough. You need to build towers, ASAP. You need to build full towers, very important. Where is the army? He has Lords here. He's trying to kill Elma, by the way. But I think it's not worth it. You cannot give this up. You cannot underestimate them. You shouldn't, at least, because they will hit you very hard. Look at their damage output once they get the chance to hit. And whenever you commit to a building, what you can do is use the block formation. Because you get additional armor and tankiness. And you pretty much have like a quarter less damage taking in this period of time when you are using the block formation. You can see the damage is legit. And I believe the towers are not going to even come up anytime soon. You see the damage, boys. I'm telling you. This is not Rebel of Mindless Orcs. These are Urukai. And I believe, let me check, this Isengard has no outpost. Yeah, he has no outpost under this control. And if he loses the last building, he will be the first one who's going to get defeated. Parrot Hill is going to be defeated first. Yeah, he was trying to defend very hard, but too late, too little. Yeah, the power of Isengard, boys. The power of the push of the Uruks. No soldier can do that. No peasant can do that. No orc warrior can do that. Only Urukai can do that. This Rohan is also going for Legolas. We have actually two Legolas on the field. One of them from this dude. And one of them from the blue Rohan. And the orange Rohan player is actually trying to go for more like cavalry style. But he also needs um, armory, forge blades, heavy armor. You, you need also fire arrows, by the way. Even if you don't go for the infantry, you want to have fire arrows. Because then you can later on recruit Rohirrim archers and give them fire arrow upgrade. Which, you know, which is a great counter to the pikemen. Okay. Alright, so Theorin is almost level 2, but he still has a long way before he can get to this point in which he can eventually unlock the Glorious Charge. If a level 4 Legolas with Aragorn side by side, um, we are missing Gimli for the monster trio, you know, the three hunter situation. And unfortunately in the patch 1.06, Gimli was kind of like a, a meme hero, I want to say. He was not very powerful, he was kind of like a beefy hero who can tank damage for ages, but he needed levels. To be effective you need to be level 3 for the leap attack you need to be level 7 in a patch 1.06 for the slayer and getting gimli from level 1 to level 7 was like the hardest thing in the world like i'm telling you it would be much easier to level up Gollum from level 1 to level 10 than leveling up gimli from level 1 to level 7 solo because he's just too slow and your opponent will have the chance to dodge and always disengage whenever he wants to Okay, the blue Rohan is moving for a potential attack. The Urukpit is not level 2 yet, that means no pikemen anytime soon. But you just shouldn't rush your heroes down like that, because there is lords who can still cripple you down. He needs like one more Uruk to get the Urukpit to level 2. The tower is going to be taken down, the heroes are getting levels and experience. Eoma will be crippled, Tyrion is taking way too much damage, and that's the situation I was talking about. You see the furnaces now, they are hitting, they are hitting hard. Like one of them is level 3 only, but... Very soon, in about a second or two, every single one of them is going to be level 3, super tanky, and super strong. Elma has been taken down by the Uruks, that is also the Hobbit Mirror of Brandybog, <laughs> who was officially joining the, the, the army of Rohan. We have also Saruman, the White Wizard of the Orphan Tower. Legolas shooting, level 2, boom, fireball on your face, son. In the meantime, this Rohan is rotating. That's a very strong army, by the way. Keep that please in mind. Like, this army has Tyrion leadership, has Aragorn leadership for, in total, 100% more damage, and Legolas can keep leveling them up all the time. Look, one level up from Legolas was bringing them from level 1 all the way to level 3. So even without fighting, just rotating your train archers ability from Legolas over and over again can get them from level 1 all the way to level 10. And level advantage in this game is so massive. 
The only downside of the army is the lack of mobility. That means, for example, the timing is very important. When you move now to the blue Rohan with your army and you are being attacked at the same time from the orange Rohan, it's hard for you to rotate back fast enough. So by the time you finally get back to your outpost, you might already have lost it, you know? That's why I personally prefer cavalry more in a map like this, because you need to be eventually fast and tempo is very important in this game. But infantry in an all-out fight is definitely better. So cavalry cannot fight against infantry in a one-on-one -on -one fight, that's not possible, uh, unless you have glorious charge. Okay. I mean, this guy doesn't like fire arrows, by the way. <laughs> what he just did was combining Uruk with the pikemen. That's a very cost-efficient combination. They lose a lot of momentum and movement speed. They also lose the ability to change formation to the porcupine formation or to the shield wall formation, but they you need to only upgrade one Uruk and then combine them with the pikemen and boom, they have also the upgrades. And they are kind of uh, also at the same time countering a little bit. Oh, fight for me and I will reward you. But, 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 but. Legolas! Oh, yeah, he killed him. Oh, hold on. Oh, he got level 5 with Turing King. That's huge. But you need to be mounted to use your ability. You cannot use ability when you're, when you're not mounted. Theodin cannot use the glorious charge. Land has been used, land has been covered. Attila is coming in clash from Aragorn. Does he have under his ward? No, he doesn't. Legolas got crippled down and he will not make it out alive. This Theodin has to just get mounted. Get on your horse, old man, and use your glorious charge. Don't tell me you will die before that. Don't tell me you will die before that. I mean, I think the Rohan play can still defend this somehow because the well is healing up Aragorn. Oh my, the Uruk damage, man. That's toxic damage, dude. Uh, that's kind of crazy. I think the Isengard player is, you know, yeah, he, indeed. He's fishing power points. He's fishing power points. He killed all the heroes from Rohan. He killed Aragorn. He killed Theorin. He killed literally everything. Legolas. He got 6 power points after the Tainted Land, so he has the power points if he wants to for the Freezing Ring. And that's gonna be a great counter to the Ro Red Rohan, because let's be real here, I think the Red Rohan is the strongest player right now. But his strength is around leadership based. So basically Aragorn leadership, Legolas, very strong hero, interior leadership, making those units very, very strong. But Freezing Ring is saying, hell no, you know, you are not having any leadership, which will make the Isengard army way stronger. But you cannot win with Swordman and Pikemen exclusively. They are very vulnerable against fire arrow damage, and before they can reach to the combos of Rohan, they will eventually get slaughtered. So, Isengard play definitely needs um, some combos himself, like Crossbowman combo. Okay, I mean, this Rohan is trying to finish off the orange Rohan player Hydro. Hydro has an outpost under his control, so he won't be defeated even after losing the camp. But losing the camp, of course, losing you lots of <laughs> opportunity. Like, you will eventually be poor. And you can see that, right? There is still a farm which is not captured all game long. <laughs> the outpost here too. But uh, I mean, Rohan player was getting a bit map control, obviously, because he's using cavalry. And the Isengard player at the bottom right side has been defeated way before that. And the Isengard player here, by the way, who is um, Liu Kang, has defeated two players so far. He defeated the Rohan next to him and the Isengard next to him. Big commitment with the horses. Yeah, Aragorn. Legolas. Eoma. Do you guys remember the moment between Legolas, um, Aragorn and Gimli versus Eoma in the films, you know? When Eoma was like try threatening uh, Gimli and Legolas was like, you will you will die before your stroke fell, you know? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Does he have Andrew's sword? No, I believe not. Nobody has Andrew's sword. I mean, he has the power points for it, Danishka. It's four power points, and Anduri's sword is a, is a must-have. So basically, if you want to play with Gandalf, you want to have Gandalf the White. That's very important. And the same also goes to the Anduri's sword from Aragorn. If you want to play with Aragorn, Anduri is needed. The elves, they're gonna die. Um, this Legolas has to be careful. Atelas has been used. Oh uh oh Oh, what a... Oh my, I am the better Legolas. He's level 7 now. He's the Arrowwind. <laughs> I mean, he's winning this fight, but he also lost all his units, by the way. He lost every single combo, only the two heroes remaining on the field, and now he needs to build another army. And that's a very smart move. The Alvin Warriors, I'm a big fan of them, because they are way faster in compared to combos, and 
they'd also be, be better against horses because when they get charged down from the Rohirrim or from Gondor Knights, what you can do is you can use the uh, alternative alternate weapon, weapon, sorry, uh, which makes them immune to be trampled. So that's the only unit, archer unit in the entire game, that is immune to be trampled. Okay. Oh my goodness. What is this army, dude? Three combos with Uruk crossbowmen, one pikeman, Lord's leadership, Saruman leadership, freezing ring. In war chant. Holy guacamole. And obviously, the golden rule also applies in this situation. In a free for all map, buying a second castle is a no no. Don't do that. When you do that, there is a high chance that nobody is gonna play with you free for all again. <laughs> That's like the golden rule. You can do that in a one on one situation, in a 2v2 situation, nobody cares, but in a free for all, it will just give you such a big advantage, undeserved advantage, buying a second beast and making you pretty much immortal. Oh, this poor uh, <laughs> Rohan play Hydro. He's about to, yeah, cripple Lego. Dude, you gotta fall in love with Lourdes, man. Lourdes is such a crazily strong hero. What can you do against that? You know what? Boom! And that's the reason why Isengard has only two heroes. Lourdes and Saruman, but the combination of these two is so deadly, is so strong, that two of them are enough. Look, he will just steal them now. He missed it. He stole one of them. He's running for his life. Throw X somehow. Oh, does he have throw X or not? Where is he? Where is where is Gimli? Uh, Gimli? Oh, he has no throw X. He's trying to kill him, but, you know, fancy footwork. Look, Theory. <laughs> We shall make peace. <laughs> oh, do you remember? <laughs> oh, he killed him, dude. He killed him. We shall make peace. Can we not make peace, you and I? We shall make peace. When, you know, where was Gondor when Westfall fell? That, this is such a meme, by the way. That's crazy. Like in the films. Like, you you remember the talk between Saruman on, on Orf Orfang and Theoden, you know, they have like a conversation, you know, let's be brothers and stuff like this. And, uh, you know, Theoden getting super angry with that. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you joking? I'm not gonna be your friend. Boom! Leap attack. Gimli is tanky boy. As you can see, he has like an arrow dodge chance. So he can tank arrows for a long time. He's the tankiest hero when it comes to tank arrow damage. You look, he was fighting for a long time, but he will eventually die. Lourdes healing up. Level 6. 60% more damage leadership. And Isengard has like outposts here, you know. He will eventually get more outposts. This is, by the way, still under Hydro's control. So he will not be defeated after losing the camp. But of course, he lost literally everything, and from the fight all alone, Isengard player was able to get 8 power points collected. So, I keep saying it and I mean it. When you are playing free-for-all games, boys, make sure to be participating in every possible fight. That's the one key to victory. Because in long terms, the player with the more power points advantage will end up winning every single time. So if you camp it out, if you just wait to be attacked, there is a high chance, like uh, the chance is kind of ridiculously high, like 90% chance that you will lose. Because by the time you finally get your Alvin Wood unlocked from your spellbook, there will be a Balrog knocking at your door. And you will be like, how is this possible? Because the guy was fighting against other people while you was camping. And camping is a no-no. Don't camp when you play free for all. That's a bad thing. Okay, I mean, what is this Rohan doing? Uh, does he have theory in leadership level 4? Because what is the reason of the transition now? I'm wondering. Oh yeah, okay. It kind of makes sense because he has Glorious Charge. But even now, without Emma leadership, it's kind of mid, you know. I, I personally wouldn't recommend it. I believe the, you know, Cavalry, Infantry would be a better thing. And you can see, the more players are defeated in the game, the more command points people will be able to unlock. But the gap is always going to be the same. So, evil factions have always twice the command points in compared to good factions. It's pretty easy to understand. In any format, in a 1v1, 2v2, 3v4, 3v3, 4v4, every single time, the evil have twice the command points in compared to the good factions. The reason is simple, because they are cheating. <laughs> no, because, um, you know, they have more expensive units in the in the Uruk pit, for example. You need to pay 20 for the Urukai, and you need to only pay 10 for the peasants, for example, right? So, that's pretty obvious. Okay. Hume. Level 3, beautiful. Beautiful trample. Now, the 5-player free-for-all turn into a 1v1 situation. 
in this Rohan didn't go for actually for Anduri's ward. I think he wanna be a bit faster. Cripple has been used. Did he steal them or what? No, hold on. There was the Legolas from this dude. Okay, I okay. I was like, how did he just kill his own, <laughs> own Legolas? But that's not what happened. Hydro didn't get defeated yet. That's what happened. I thought he's defeated, but he has still the outpost, and he has two outposts under his control, actually. He has, look, he, I'm gonna show you one thing. He has in total five statues, and he gets the full value of the hero bonus for 30%. So reviving his Legolas will only cost him 1400, even though he's level five. You know, recruit, uh, reviving, Ara or recruiting Aragorn for the first time will only cost him 2450 instead of 3500. And ally special summon, kind of in a questionable place, in my opinion. Um, not the best place. What are you going to achieve here in a random area because the ends are very slow. And they will eventually feed power points now to the red Rohan player. And the red Rohan player is also up to almost 7 power points. He didn't pick the Andri sword either. Beautiful rock from the, from the trees. They are burning. And even if you burn and you don't damage them after, the burn effect lasts until the end dies or until the end steps on a water, you know? But there is no water on a map like the Solution of Smog map. <laughs> That's not here. So he will die. And watch what's going to happen with the power points of the opponent player once he's burning. So he just takes damage from fire. Look the power points. You see? He got a half a power point just because he damaged the end one time. And he died to the fire effect. I mean, units like ants and eagles and, you know, heroes, they give just too many power points, so you should be trying to not lose them. But I think the clo yeah, I mean, uh, Liu Kang is definitely leading the power point department. He has now Saruman back on the menu. He has a very strong army. Unfortunately, he lost all the highly leveled units, but it's okay. Um, that's one thing I can also give you advice when you play Isengard. You should always try to use your speechcraft. Whenever it's available, just use it to give experience to your units. In long terms, it's going to be quite rewarding, and you will get stronger and stronger and stronger. Balista, for the siege, one of the outposts will be given up. I mean, he has zero units on the field. Like, literally. Hydro has 40 out of 150 command points available, and 10 of them are into Gimli and Legolas. <laughs> so, in, in the patch 1.06, the heroes, they also cost command points. So, not all of them, but few of them. He was even recapturing the camp, by the way, but he will be losing it right after. He has no money. He cannot buy this one more time. And after losing this in the outpost at the bottom left, the only thing that will keep him alive is going to be this outpost. But the question is, how long is this outpost gonna last for? Legolas being annoying, shooting from a long distance. Gimli got crippled. Again, you need to be level 7, you know. So level 7 is kinda ridiculous, you know what I'm saying. Like, getting level 7 is so difficult. <laughs> Theorin is riding alone. <laughs> Oh, Elven Alliance, he, they got stolen immediately by Saruman. Oh. Come to my come to my aid, throw him all you want. What is Legolas doing here? Uh, running for his life. Luckily he's fast. Oh oh. Hold on a second. I think the I think the Rohan player, uh, Hydro is gonna lose them simultaneously. Like he's gonna lose the outpost to Rohan and the other outpost to Isengard. That's what I call a sandwich situation. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Delicious. And he will be defeated. Right? Yes. Okay. Now they have more command points. The Rohan play had just 150. And the command points are going up to 200. Because normally in a one-on-one -on -one situation, that's the amount of command points you will have. 200 for the good faction, 400 for the evil factions. And that's exactly what happened. We started with a 5-player free-for-all. And now it's officially a 1v1 one -one situation between Isengard and Rohan. And to be honest, I think that's like a very great situation because we see literally only Isengard and Rohan in the free-for-all just like in the films, you know? I like that. Okay. I mean, here's lots of Rohirrim. One of them is being even level 7. Um, the Warm Tongue ability from Saruman is on cooldown, so he cannot steal them anytime soon. But Lords can cripple. There comes the Glorious Charge. He will insta-cripple this dude, yeah. Oh, Lourdes died in a second, though. I mean, Cripple, um, I mean, Glorious Charge is very strong buff, but it doesn't make your units immortal. So, Pikeman would still counter them. However, this Isengard play doesn't have any Pikeman on the field. And the combos without Pikeman, especially against highly level Rohirrim, are not gonna play the game. But the thing, and that's the one thing you need to always keep in mind. The one thing you need to understand. Oh, Theoden has been killed regardless. 
Um, the one thing you need to understand about Isengard is the second you lose your heroes like Lourdes and Saruman, you will end up getting a lot of power points. So in long terms, even if you feed, 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 feed from losing Uruks, Pikemen, Crossbowmen, Berserker, to losing heroes like Lourdes and Saruman, every single time you will get power points from it. And that's the reason why he has the Balrog so early. Like Danish Tuga, the Rohan player top, has not even picked the 6 power points and or the 7 power points Cloud Break yet. And he needs on top of that 10 more power points. Backflip. Boom. Fly, you fools. <laughs> Dude, you gotta laugh, Badrock. You know what I'm saying? He's so cool. And he's so good against camps to look at this. Holy guacamole. You know, I, I, there, there is a reason why we've been nerfed Balrog and EOD in the patch 2.22. And this should be enough of an answer if you would ever ask me. But why did you nerf Balrog? Why did you nerf EOD? That should be the answer. Because I don't like the idea of losing the game or winning the game from one single special summon. It's not going to be rewarding. I don't feel good, <laughs> you know. When I just summon randomly a Balrog in a place and I finish off the game. And there is no counterplay to that either, because nobody can fight him. I mean, Gandalf can, but he can just turn and whip him one time and Gandalf will be dead. I mean, he messed up, by the way. Like, you messed up big time. If you cannot finish your camp with your Balrog, you messed up big time, my friend. I mean, Rohan has a lot of farms outside. He will look his money. Like, he has enough money to buy every time the, the camp back for the next 10 times. He has almost 20,000 in the bank. But he's playing a little bit too careful. Again, I always keep saying it because I believe it's very important. And hopefully you guys understand my point of view. The second you see the enemy using Balrog, that should be the signal for you to fully commit over and over again. Look, money is not a problem for Rohan. But what will be a problem is the army. So what you can do when you have this much money, this much map control, you have like plenty of farms being level 3 all around the map. What you can do is... You use this outpost as a production century, you know, like production uh, base, if you want to say so. And build double stable in archer range. And the second you lose units, you can keep spamming them and get them on the field way faster. That's the one thing you need to improve first. You don't have to stick up to one stable and hope that this is going to be enough of a speed. RTS schemes and also Battle for Middle Earth are about tempo and speed. And if you can afford the tempo and speed of having more than one stable, more than two stable, more than two archer range, then just do it. Because the money you have saved, 20,000, is useless if you are not using it. Like for example, he has a full camp open, he doesn't even rebuild it at all. Like his tunnel vision focus on this location. He was trying to hope that um, this push is going to be enough. But even, let's assume he will be able to destroy the camp, which I don't think is going to happen. Oh, but they might actually go for a for a camp treat. This army is looking dangerous. Does he have freezing rain? Yeah. Yeah, he will give up this camp. Remember, you cannot buy any other camp. You cannot. That's forbidden. <laughs> so you cannot. I mean, Rohan can only buy his own camp back, which he had from the beginning of the game. But he cannot just go around and buy this camp, for example. That's not possible. I mean, it's possible, of course, but it's against the rules, you know? Just lost theory. You see the durability of a Isengard camp? Level 3 buildings? Aragorn coming a bit too late. Balrog is gonna be available very soon again. And that's the reason why we nerfed, <laughs> nerfed the cooldown of Balrog and EOD. So they have like 2 more minutes now. Cooldowns. It was just kind of crazy and a little bit cringe that you could use them literally before your, before your opponent was able to rebuild his stuff. Which he was decently destroying. And then before he can rebuild everything... Get Balrog available once again, you know? I mean, he doesn't have EOD, by the way. Don't be fooled. Like, he has 10 power points, but he needs to pick, first of all, a 7 or a 6. Cloud Break or ends to be getting the chance to use the EOD. And you can see the base of Isengard is the most durable camp. I mean, of course, when we are talking about a camp situation. And Danish Tugam will be defeated. It's going to be the end of the game, and Isengard player was actually able to defeat every single one of the players. So he was able to beat 
four of them and that's the reason why he was getting Balrog. that's the reason why he was getting the w screen and that's what i'm trying to say when you play free for all play aggressively thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed if you did please don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys